Hi, I'm Kinkas and I'm a Synth DIY guy. Welcome to today's video, the highly anticipated Percons HD01 manual. The Erica Synth Percons is a hybrid drum machine that just looks amazing, sounds amazing. And I'd say the main feature is how hands-on it is. There's nearly no menu diving at all. You have actually a sequencer lane for each voice. You have four voices right here. Each voice has a selection of algorithms tailored to different kinds of sounds. The output section has a bucket brigade simulation delay. It has a compressor and uh, you have modulation section over here. There are a bunch of different functions for the sequencer. So yeah, it's a really, really fun, musical and interesting machine to make rhythms with. But you can also use it as a drone machine because the oscillators can drone on if you just put the decay all the way up. Oh, hear that? The Percons features four sonically versatile hybrid voices, digital sound engine plus analog multimode filter with overdrive, and a sequencer with simultaneous control over all four percussion tracks. Each voice has six sound engine modes, high pass, band pass, low pass filter, and eight controls for nuanced sound design, including an internal BBD effects send. All voice parameter settings can be saved as kits. To add dynamics to the performance, parameter automation is implemented and a modulation LFO can be assigned to all parameters. For a real thunderstorm, integration with external gear is considered. Each voice has a dedicated trigger input, individual output, and effect send and return with 6.3 millimeter jack sockets along with extensive MIDI implementation. All voices are summed and run through a built-in compressor. The Percons HD01 is a unique live performance and sound design instrument that tears down the borders between drum machine, synthesizer, and drone instrument. Time to ride the skies, it says here. So the features, four hybrid voices, digital sound engine and analog multimode filter with overdrive, eight controls per voice, trigger inputs for the drum pads. They are back here behind each one of the voices. You have a bunch of jacks. There's the trigger inputs. There are also individual voice outputs. So you can run each voice through a different mixer channel if you like. If you want to pan them, if you want to EQ them, if you want to apply effects, you can actually run them through effects pedals if you like. There is even send and return per voice. In case, for example, you want to use an effects pedal, but continue to use the internal mono mixer and compressor, you can do that. You can run a voice through a distortion pedal, for example, or a phaser pedal and have it come back in and be mixed inside the machine. There are 64 kit and 64 pattern memories, plus additional memory on the SD card, which is in the back here as well. There's a built-in bucket brigade delay digital emulation. So this is not a real bucket brigade. It's a digital emulation of one, which is great because that means it has the beautiful sound of a bucket brigade without all the noise, right? So you can have a cleaner sound. Although there is a traditional Bucket Brigade mode that you engage in the settings of the machine and it'll bring up that noise if you want it to sound noisy like a real Bucket Brigade. There is a four track sequencer with four time divisions and four time multiplications per track. You have per step ratchets and probabilities, per step parameter locks and automation recording. That's really cool. You can actually move any of these knobs around while recording your pattern and it remembers those knob movements. There are four groove algorithms, which are really interesting. We'll look into those. And there's MIDI in and MIDI out. The trigger inputs are really cool because you can actually use an actual drum uh, pad to trigger these sounds. And I have one, we're gonna try that out later. So you can integrate this machine with an acoustic drum set if you'd like, which for me is very exciting because I've been very into my drums lately. So anyway, what's included, you get the Percons drum synthesizer, you get a universal 12 volt DC wall ward adapter, and you get this really nice user manual, a physical paper printed user manual, and it's nice and big, big letters, everything is very, easy to see, easy to find. We're gonna sort of be following this manual. And here you have all four voices with identical layouts, but each one will have different sound generation algorithms. And here's the main controls, the tempo. There's a tempo knob, but there are ways to enter tempo uh, either manually or uh, via tap tempo as well. We'll get to that. The step sequencer, you may look at it and think, wow, it's a 64 step sequencer. 
No, it's actually four lanes of 16 steps, right? Now, if you want to make a 64 step sequence, you can. There's ways to chain sequences together. But really, this machine is made to be very immediate. I like to approach it in a very improvisational way. And 64 step sequences, you start getting into composition territory more than improvisation territory. And the fact that you can have random play modes, you can have different time divisions and multiplications, you can have ratchets, you can have probability, all of that adds enough excitement and uh, variation variety to your grooves that even just a 16 step sequence can become very interesting and non-repetitive so i actually think the best way to approach this machine is accepting that it's only 16 steps and the fact that you have all four sequencer lanes available simultaneously makes it very easy to uh, interact with and program in live situations you don't have to be pressing buttons to change screens and uh, select which instrument your programming you can actually even just program all of them at once you know just for fun let's do that i'm gonna press play here and just gotta go like this and there you go already we kind of have a beat going there and that's fun already let me show you the first thing that you can do these are the main trigger buttons you can actually trigger the voices by just hitting these four buttons over here and you can also use them for different functions like for example the clear so we're gonna clear all of these that I just recorded, so we can start again. Very easy. Here's the tempo knob. If I hold uh, shift and turn the tempo, we can see the tempo over here. So here we have uh, hundreds, uh, tens, and singles, right? So right now it's 224 beats per minute, right? And so that's how you see it. And when you're on this screen, you can actually manually select your tempo so let's say i want a uh, 120 i can just go over here one 100 right and 20 over here if i want 128 i can go over here that's 128 if i want 94 beats per minute i can turn off the 100 over here one two three four five six seven eight nine and for 94 beats per minute right there okay so that's how you set the tempo now if i press play I can now just activate steps by pushing the buttons, right? Now the steps are activated on the up button. So you kind of need to be quick with your button pushes, right? So if I push this one and just hold it there, it's not going to activate. I have to push it and let go fairly quickly. And there's good reasons for that because you can edit steps by holding the step. When you're editing the step, you don't want it to activate or deactivate by mistake, right? But before uh, I go into more of that advanced stuff, let's have a listen and a look at the voice, right? So this is voice number one, and I'm going to turn the compressor down for now. Right, That made it a lot louder, too. We'll turn up the level here. So now we're listening. There's a master volume right here. We're gonna use no effects on this voice for now. And this is algorithm number one, mode number one. Okay, I'm actually gonna turn up the volume slightly. There we go. Already that sounds like a really good kick drum. Okay, now let's have a look at what these, uh, these voices, how they're described in the manual. So voice one, you have three algorithms available, fold drum, wavetable drum, and simple drum, right? And each one has three modes. So for fold drum, you have no transient, noise transient, and pulse transient modes. On wavetable drum, you have wavetable one, two, and three. And on simple drum, you have waveforms one, two, and three. Also, there are two parameters that also vary in functionality according to the algorithm being used. So for algorithm one on voice one, parameter one is the fold amount. For algorithm two, it's surf. So that's surfing through the wavetables, right? So I guess you can call it wavetable morphing, perhaps. And then on algorithm three, it's the pitch envelope decay, which is cool. You don't have pitch envelope decay 
uh, on the other parameters. And then parameter two is the pitch envelope amount for all three algorithms. Okay, so let's have a listen. Let's turn on the decay here. And let's start terminating. This is the folding parameter. And this is the pitch envelope amount. So right now, there's no pitch envelope at all. And here's the filter. Right now I have it set to low pass, but you can also use it in band pass or even high pass. And you have a drive, right? Let's turn the drive down. We'll put it back in low pass and open it up for now. So if you want to use it as a drone machine, all you have to do is turn the decay all the way up, right? Finally find your note and start playing around with the folding parameter, which you can record. And uh, I'm gonna skip ahead a couple of steps here and just show you right now how to record motion. You just hold the rec button over here and move. Now it'll only record for as long as the pattern lasts. So uh, only the 16 steps of the pattern. So if you're, if you're doing like longer droney kind of stuff, maybe turn the tempo way down and that'll give you more time to play around with knobs while recording the motion. There you go. So I recorded some pitch as well as folding automation. That's pretty cool. I can record some filter cutoff. And now we'll turn the K again. And let's add some pitch envelope. Maybe a little drive. Maybe turn down the uh, pitch. All right, so that's, uh, so let's say, yeah, I want to erase that now. Well, I hold clear, I've turned off, and I can now trigger the voices and everything's back to manual, right? Right here, that's pretty spanking kick drum already. All right, let's go to algorithm two. And that's the wavetable drum. Right? And the parameter. Parameter one is the wave folding, uh, uh, sorry, the wave surfing. Let it drone again, so we can sort of just hear those waveforms. Let's turn off the drive, down the level a little bit. Very cool, right? Now let's hear the second wave table. third wave table. Sounds great. So already as a drone machine, remember you have four voices to play with, so this could be like maybe your bass drone, and then you can do something else with all three voices, and record motion on all of them, and, and perform physically turning knobs and even use the delay and whatnot. So, very cool. Now let's go to algorithm three. And that's the simple drum. And here, here the modes are the different waveforms. So here, basically we have like a sine wave, right? And 
this is this sounds like a saw wave and this is like a square wave okay. all right so let's go back to using and here we have the pitch pitch envelope time on parameter one and pitch envelope amount on parameter two cool go back to that sine wave punchy very punchy sine wave and it's nice that on this one you have the pitch envelope time as well as the amount Right, so that's voice one, right? Now, if I hold shift and hit the uh, trigger button here, I'm muting it. So this voice is still on, right? You can see the cursor and you can see that the, pr the pattern is still there, but we're not hearing it. So what I did is I muted it. So with shift and the trigger button for each voice, you can, you can simply mute them. And you can use this to perform live as well. See? So beyond the sequence that's progressing, I can actually manually trigger notes as well. All right, so let's mute that and let's have a listen to voice two. And uh, we'll look at the manual, voice two, next page. The three algorithms on voice two are full drum two, wavetable drum, and complex drum, right? And the modes for algorithm one, which is full drum two, uh, let's stop this for a second so I can talk, are no transient, noise transient, and pulse transient. So these are the transients uh, that get added to the sound. And then parameter one is the fold amount. Parameter two is pitch envelope amount on all three algorithms. So I'm not gonna talk about parameter two anymore. That's always gonna be pitch envelope amount, right? On algorithm two, which is a wavetable drum, like we've seen on uh, voice one, right? This one also has three wavetables and parameter one is surfing between them. We'll see how similar they sound to the wavetables on the other voice. And then you have complex drum over here on algorithm three. Um, the three modes are waveforms one, two, and three. Parameter one is modulation oscillator frequency. So it, there's a mod oscillator. That means there's FM going on there. That's why it's a comp complex drum, right? Audio rate, FM. And so let's listen to what these algorithms sound like, right? Let's hit play here again. We'll go to algorithm one, mode one for now. We'll turn on decay all the way. We'll turn off the pitch uh, envelope. Let's turn off the effects so we can really hear. Also, let's put it on low pass and turn it all the way up and no drive. All right, so we've kind of reset the voice. This is the fold drum fold drum two so this is the folding parameter yeah and the modes are actually the transients so this is no transient here's a noise transient you can hear it on the on the hits right let's let's have more hits Here's the pulse transient. So it gives you this attack. And here's the pitch envelope amount. Filter, drive. Very cool. Now let's turn off the drive, turn up the filter, turn off the pitch. 
envelope again and let's go to algorithm two which is the wavetable cool this one sounds almost like vocal formant synthesis and that's actually mode three so that's the third wavetable let's go to two And wave table one. Very cool. And they're different. They're different from voice one. All right. And now number three is the complex drum. And remember that the parameter is the pitch. Parameter one is the pitch of the modulation oscillator, right? frequency of it rather so you can do these FME kind of sounds very cool and you have three different waveforms which are available at the mode switch so let's listen to it without the modulation so you have this one one and this one that's pretty harsh let's go back to letting them trigger use a little bit of pitch envelope a little filter a little drive good effect and here's the bucket delay bucket brigade delay you have the time here. There's long mode and short mode, right? So for like quick slapbacks and carpet strong type ideas, you use short. And for a more recognizable repetition type delay, you use the long mode. And there's color switch for that as well. This is bright, mid, and dark. There's feedback. Master send is like the overall amount of effect for the whole machine but I'm getting ahead of myself let's turn that off for now and that's been voice 2 let's mute that and remember shift and the trigger button for that voice mute it and now we're gonna trigger voice voice 3 which as you can tell right now it's uh, tailored for snare kind of sounds, right? Let's have a detailed look at it. So we're gonna do, we're gonna reset it like we did the other ones. We're gonna put no drive, low pass filter with the cutoff high, no effects and both parameters all the way down, algorithm one, mode one. And we'll leave decay all the way high, so it's droning for now. Okay, and let's see what voice three has for us. And uh, the three algorithms are resonant drums, slap, and carpless. And then on algorithm one, which is resonant drums, you have three modes, resonant snare, resonant bass drum, and a noise slash tone drum. And then the parameters, one and two are noise tone and noise decay. And then on algorithm two, which is the slap, you have uh, three modes. They're just called modes, mode one, two, and three. And you have a reverb. Uh, so separate from the uh, bucket brigade delay, you actually have a reverb available on algorithm two of voice three. And parameter two is crunch for that one. And algorithm three is carpless strong. In case you don't know, carpless strong is a kind of string physical modeling synthesis based on a delay. So it's a delay that's so fast that it's heard as a pitch rather than a repetition. And it sounds kind of like a string. That's what carpless strong is in a nutshell. You have three modes for it. And then parameters one and two are edge and twang. So let's have a listen first to resonant drums, right? So let's press play here again. Ooh, sounds very nice and percussive. And this is the resonance snare. 
So we have a noise tone and decay. So with the decay, noise decay all the way down, you don't even hear that noise. So if you want the noise, you have to turn the decays up somewhat. Already that's a very convincing electronic snare sound, right? Tone and decay. Right. Mode two is resonant bass drum. Very nice. And again, you have noise tone and decay. Remember, you, you can always, you know, use filter, drive, send it to effects, and so on. But we're, we're trying not to do any of that right now, because I just want you to be able to hear uh, what the raw sound engines sound like. And mode three is the noise tone drum. I actually think parameter 2 is doing something different here rather than noise decay. It's changing the pitch of that uh, second oscillator that we're hearing there. So we're hearing like two voices beyond the plus the noise, right? Yeah. So that's what parameter 2 is actually doing. The, no the manual is not correct here. Parameter 2 is changing the pitch of the second oscillator. the relationship between the two pitches, right? Because they, when you turn tuned, it moves both of them together. Very cool. Now let's go to algorithm two, which is the slap, right? Oh, and here we already, we can hear that reverb, which is parameter one, right? And here we have, oh, look, it gives you a repetition. The decay, so that's like a clap. It's called slap, but I really am thinking of it more like a clap. And here, the pitch is more like a filter, see? Parameter one is the reverb. Parameter two is a crunch. It's like a distortion. So this is like a clap, kind of. A Very cool. And you have three modes for that. So, and the, the modes seem to also affect the length or how many repetitions you're getting on that first hit, right? Or how snappy it is or how clappy it is. And the reverb can get pretty, pretty intense. Very cool. And moving on to algorithm three, which is Carpus Strong. See, it's like a string being struck, right? And here we have edge and twang. They both affect kind of like the brightness of the sound in different ways, right? And this is mode three, there's, there's mode two and mode one as well, which are slightly different. Two, three, no drive, here's the effect. Right? And you have individual level for each voice, which is nice, because that's how you mix them together when you're playing this thing by itself. 
and like mold three the best out of these. It's very nice. Maybe bandpass filter on this one. Cool. All right, let's mute this voice as well. So remember shift and the trigger button, the voice trigger button. I think that's what it's called. I, or maybe I'm making that terminology up. All right, let's have a look at voice four. Uh -huh, you can tell it's tailored for hi-hats, right? So. You, there, there's infinite possibilities. There are infinite possibilities within each voice, but they are kind of tailored for specific sounds that you would use uh, when making beats, right? So it's not so hard to dial in just a nice beat, even though you can push it beyond that. It is clearly made for beats. So let's again have a look at voice four in the manual here so we can really know what it's doing. And again, we're gonna turn effect send all the way down, drive all the way down, low pass filter all the way up, uh, mode and algorithm all the way up. And interesting, this one seems to have some kind of effect going on as well. Okay, so. Stop for a second. Let's look at algorithm one. That's called the noise hat. Uh, there are three modes, which are white noise, metallic noise, and pulse stack noise. And then you have envelope amount and attack. All right. So let's let's make something simple with it. Just four on the floor here. So let's see, envelope amount, parameter one, and attack is parameter two. Cool, so this, this one can give you almost like a brush, kind of a scrape, right? It's the only one that gives you, and not a sharp attack, gives you the possibility of a soft attack, right? And again, the pitch here, the tune, is more of a filter, like a tilt filter. Since this is noise, it's not really affecting a, a pitch per se. Right? And the decay again can give you long decays and even drones. Very cool. And again, parameter one is the envelope amount. Channel is the I'm not hearing it like that so much. I'm hearing it more like a reverb, kind of an echo, at least for this mode. Let's try mode two, which is a metallic noise. Yeah, definitely parameter one on algorithm one. It's not so much an envelope amount as it is kind of a delay. Parameter two again does the same thing, which is the attack. Cool. And now, mode three is the pulse stack noise. This is algorithm one, noise hat, and this is mode three pulse stack noise. And yeah, parameter one on this one is doing something different. It's more like between noise and pitch. And it seems like the tune parameter is kind of a sample rate. See, here you have a higher sample rate. And here it starts kind of degrading it. So cool, you can dial in 
Very interesting sounds that way. And again, here is the attack amount. All right, let's move to algorithm two, which is noise tone. This is what the frequency does, or pitch. Here's parameter one is the amount of noise, it seems to be. Parameter two, again, seems to be the spread of pitches. So you can get a pitch that's very close to the main one, or you can get an interval, see? And then you can add noise to taste with this one. Very cool. And that's mode three. Mode one sounds like this. Mode two. Yeah, their variations in the waveform seems to be. Now the parameters still do the same thing, which is the pitch spread on parameter two and the noise amount on parameter one. And now algorithm three, acoustic hats. Doesn't sound very acoustic yet. All right. It looks like uh, parameter two is the attack. And we have closed hat, open hat, and ride, right? And parameter one is the sample rate, right? So that's why we were hearing it very degraded because we had the sample rate all the way up, which actually is down, right? You're down sampling, so to speak. Let's turn up the volume a bit. I'll just give it some drive. So let's go back to the more hi-fi version of this sound. Yeah, and that does sound very much like an acoustic closed hat. Parameter two is the attack. Yeah, so again, you can have a soft attack or a sharp attack. That's why it was sounding soft, because we had a soft attack. And since the sample has a fast decay, we were losing volume, right? We were losing the, the portion of the sound that has more volume, which is the attack. So let's leave this at a fast attack for now. And here's basically the pitch of the sample. This is a sample. It's a sample of an actual hi-hat, right? And the modes are... Closed, open, very nice. It's a nice sample of an open hi-hat. And ride. Wow, very cool ride cymbal sound. And you can tell it's actually a sample. Sample rate. Attack. You can almost use this for a kind of a ducking effect, right? Very cool, very cool. Hey, right, let's open up the other voices and hear what this crazy pattern sounds like. Not too bad. Pretty cool. Yeah. I can already hear myself starting a synth pop band with only this instrument and a microphone. Okay. So those are the sound engines. Now, uh, just quickly, the 
this is very self-explanatory, but we'll talk about the main controls here. Play and stop is a single button. Play and for stop, right? The record button is really for recording voice parameter settings. And here's the thing, the reason why the per cons actually reads when you let go of the button rather than when you first press it is because you can either latch it or you can uh, hold it. So if I hold the record button, I can do stuff, and then when I let go, it's off, see? Now, if I press it quickly, it latches, it stays on. So that's why the buttons are actually reading your finger lifting from the button rather than first pressing it, so that it can tell how long you're holding the button. If you're holding the button longer than a second or so, then it knows that you know, you're manually holding that record uh, with your finger, whereas if you press it quickly, it'll just stay on, it'll latch. I don't know if I've made myself too clear, but that's basically what it does. And then what you can do is record parameter movements. So let's quickly have a look at that. I'll, I'll press the record here, and we'll start turning some pitch knobs. some decay knobs as well. Cool, so now all of those movements that I just made got recorded, right? And that's one way to do it is by just quickly pressing the record. And then just remember to press it again when you're done so that the next changes that you make don't get recorded if you don't want them to, all right? Now, the reset button just resets the sequencer. It's useful when inputting different sequence time divisions or multiplications per voice, and then you need to synchronize them. So let's have a look at that. So the shift button, immediately you can see it changes the display over here of the sequencer screen, quote unquote. And basically you have over here divide, multiply, groove, and play mode. You have modulation destination, modulation depth. All of these are extra functions that you achieve with modifiers, right? So with the shift, as you can see, the LEDs are brighter in the times one lane of the multiply. That means that all of the four sequences or sequencer lanes are at one time the uh, clock, right? So they're not being multiplied or divided by anything. And you can change that by just pressing any of these buttons. So you can divide by four thirds, you can divide by two, you can divide by four, you can divide by eight, or you can multiply by two, multiply by three halves. Um, I'm not sure about the math here, how to understand it, but basically, yeah, you have two, four, three over two, four over three over here. So yeah, you can get a bunch of different multiplications and divisions for each voice by doing that, by holding shift. So sometimes, Things get kind of crazy when you do that, and you want to make sure that the sequence starts all together, and you do that by pressing reset. So let's try that real quick. We're going to divide and multiply differently. That's kind of crazy, right? So let's reset it. Okay. So when I hit reset, they all start on one. That's kind of cool. Already my sequence is sounding much nicer and more interesting now that I've created these divisions and multiplications. Right? By the way, while I'm at it and talking about the shift functions, another one is the play mode. And you have forward, backward, ping pong, and random, right? And again, they're available for all four uh, sequencer lanes, right? So let's try something like, for example, the first one will go forward, the second one will go backward, so the third one will be ping ponging, and the fourth one will be random, right? That's how you do it. You see here play mode, and the lanes are labeled here, forward, backward, ping pong, and random, and they apply to all four uh, sequencer lanes. Let's hit play and hear what that sounds like. So see what I mean, how you can get lots of variation and very interesting patterns even while using just a 16-step sequence. That's super cool right there. And I can reset it. Very cool. 
Now, again, while I'm using the shift key, there's also groove and the groove is, uh, is actually dynamic. It's not swing. Don't confuse it with swing. Swing is a different thing. It's shuffle on this machine and there's a separate button for that. And you can set the shuffle on each lane separately or all together the same amount, right? By holding the shuffle and then using the strips here to determine how much shuffle you want. So let's hear that. All right, let's, let's go back to everybody being forward and everybody on uh, one time division, right? And now we can give it a shuffle just so you can hear what the shuffle sounds like. Okay, so that's basically the swing. You get uh, closer and closer to a triplet subdivision, uh, the more shuffle you get. Instead of a straight ta 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 ta, you get ta ka 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 Why don't I make a simpler pattern, just like a more straightforward thing for these uh, demonstrations. So again, clear, okay, so now I've cleared everything and we can do a four on the four kick here and just get like dial in a really nice thumpy kick drum sound. Now let's do hi-hat. Let's say you want dynamic variation, right? And uh, there are two ways to do that. One of them is to use the grooves. And I will go back to talking about grooves, right? I was talking about how grooves are different than shuffle, and I showed you shuffle. So now I'm going to show you groove. And we have here a straight hi-hat, just hi-hats all, all throughout, right? Now if I hold shift here and choose a different groove, you can see what it's doing is it's creating uh, a, a pattern of dynamic variation with that hi-hat, right? And you can then different ones. Second one, first one. First one is just like normal. Actually normal is off, right? This is just straightforward. Every hit is the same volume. But then you, you can have these variations, which give you kind of a different flow, kind of a different groove. So that's nice, right? Now, another way to do that, uh, where you have more control, actually requires you to go into the settings. Where you go into the setting is shift mod. I hold shift, I hit mod over here on the right side, and now we have some settings. Now this part, you kind of have to go look in the manual. I mean, personally, I can't really memorize what everything is here and there's nothing written. So luckily it's very easy to find because it's near the last page of the manual. And there's one function here on the configuration settings called accent. It's the third button on the second lane. That's this one. So now I've engaged accent. Now what that means, and let's go back, is that now uh, each button press cycles through one of three states rather than just two, right? Prior to doing this, you just turned a step on or off. Now you either turn it on, you turn it on accented, or you turn it off. So it's a little trickier to program. You have to think a little more, but now... I can, let's say, uh, let's turn everybody off. And now the first press is unaccented, right? But then I can press a second time and get some of these hi-hat steps to be accented. Right? So I didn't want to wait to show you this all the way at the end because I do consider it to be a very important feature for drum programming in general to be able to use accents, right? In fact, even for the kick drum here, I can have one kind of kind of a grace kick before the main kick. See? 
right? So it's like a softer first hit preparing the main one. Same thing with snares, right? So let's let's do a snare here. Let's get a better kind of a snare sound. Rather, this would be our snare. There we go. So now we have a strong snare on the twos and fours, and I can have a little grace note snare kind of right. And you can tell the pitch is also a little bit lower, not just the volume. So that's really cool, very important functionality here too. And we'll leave this on. I'm, I'm just gonna leave this on as a preference to the possibility to have accents on my programming here. Why don't we add a little shuffle? That's too much. Yeah, and personally, I like to have the same shuffle for all four voices, like a global shuffle. And it's easy enough to do. All you have to do is, you know, rub, run your finger all the way through all voices simultaneously. And that's how you get a global control of the shuffle. That's nice right there. This is a very cool. Use a high pass on the hi hat here. And we'll add some effect on the snare. Nice. Now let's hear what the compressor sounds like. All right? I have to wait for that. First, I'm going to turn down the volume because the compressor does pump it up. And I'll bring the compressor amount and threshold. Turn down the volume again. See how it squishes it. And actually, turning the compressor threshold knob clockwise is more like, like on a normal compressor, it would be to turn it counterclockwise, right? You're lowering the threshold as you turn it up on this and here's the compressor amount. So now, now it's all like maximum. That's how the compressor sounds. All the way up, right? Now let's bring it down to a more reasonable level. Control the volume here again. It's nice. I, I, I'll leave it here, you know, some compressor, some threshold leave it engaged now maybe let's turn the uh, color for the bucket brigade delay into the middle position here so it's not super dark but not super bright either a little bit more feedback cool so here's a nice beat we're missing uh, something on voice 2 Like that. Nice. All right, this is a cool beat. I like it. Now, I like the beat and I like the kit. I want to save them. I want to be able to call them again, recall them uh, once I turn the machine off tomorrow, you know, and or at a gig. And that's very easy to do. All you have to do is go to pattern here. And here you will see all the patterns that have been saved in the machine. Right now, I haven't saved any of them. I actually did a full factory reset before I started this demo. Or this manual so the way you do it is hold rec and then hit one of the slots and now it's saved on there now remember to do the same with kit right so i pressed kit now 
And again, this will show all of the kits that have been saved on the machine. I like to kind of keep the kits and patterns as sets. So I'm going to save the kit that goes with this pattern in the equivalent slot, the first slot again. So a rec, and there we go. So now if I change to another kit and I change to another pattern, I'll press play, you know, our, this pattern doesn't have anything in it. Let's program something. And now let's change some parameters or parameters of the voices. Right, so this is a different kit now and a different pattern. So let's save them. I'm gonna hit pattern, hit record, save on two, hit kit, hit record, hold record, and one, right? So now I can change back to the first kit. So this is pattern two with kit one, right? And now I can go to pattern and now I'm back to that first pattern, right? And you can see it also recalled my shuffle setting which the second pattern doesn't have, right? Now let's hear what this pattern sounds like with the second kit. Very nice as well. All right. We're progressing nicely. I got sidetracked somewhat, but let's go back to the manual. In the temple and main control section, there's a couple of things that you can do, like the hard reset. Hard reset is a reset that will ignore the uh, internal clock. So let's say you're playing along to a recording or a drummer and you you need you need to reset it right at the one, but you know there's not a common clock. By holding shift and reset, you now have a bunch of functions available on these buttons over here on the trigger buttons, right? The first one is the hard reset. So let's try that. I'm gonna hold shift and reset. And now this button is my hard reset. All right, so this allows me to manually cue my beat to start exactly when I want it to. All right, that's a very cool function right there. Now you have a tap tempo, which is the second button. So again, let's say, you're trying to sync to something that's pre-existing, you can tap tempo to it. And as you can see, it displays your new tempo on the sequencer LEDs, right? Each tempo change is reflected right here, right? And you can, while I'm still holding shift reset, I can also manually adjust that tempo, just like when we were holding shift and turning the tempo knob, right? So that's a really nifty feature as well. And then you have tempo nudge. So the two bottom ones, again, when you're holding shift reset, the two bottom keys, they become a plus and minus nudge, right? So let's do that. slowly moving up and or down if I hold it it keeps going down and there you go that's the tempo nudge all right let's see what's on the next page of the manual there's also pattern length which is achieved with the last step over here, right? So that's uh, in case you want the different lengths for each channel of the sequencer, right? So right now they're all set to 16 steps, but you can have different lengths, which will generate a sort of a poly polymetric sequences, right? So let's see. So that's another way to add interest and variety to your pattern because if they have different lengths they won't cycle through and repeat always the same
by the way, one of the play modes, remember shift and play mode over here? We were talking about forward, backward, uh, ping pong, and random. Random works really well for hi-hats, for example, because then it creates this natural variation of the hi-hat while everything else is still steady. So let's go back to the last step and set everybody to back to 16. And the will and now I have random set for the hi-hats. Okay. Shift here. And we can turn off some of the hi-hat steps to add that possibility of steps not triggering at all. Let's turn off the shuffle. Works better for random without a shuffle too. That's another way to add interest and variety to a repeating pattern. You use random play mode maybe for just one or two of the voices. And that way you have, you know, some of the voices are consistent and you get that feeling of, of just a moving beat. But you have one or two that are varying randomly and that gives you uh, variety and motion. So cool. So that's mastered pattern length. Clear all patterns and automations. We already talked about that. I've already showed you how to do it. By pressing Shift plus Clear, plus the corresponding tab key, only the recorded parameter automation will be cleared. Now, this is important. Let's say you like your pattern, but you didn't love the motion that you recorded. You can erase only the motion by holding Shift and Clear, and then the uh, corresponding tab key over here. So let's do that. I'm going to automate the uh, pitch of the kick drum. So I'm going to hit record here. Right, let's say I don't like that, but I want to preserve the pattern. I can hold shift clear, hit that button there, and now it's erased the uh, pattern automation and it's reflecting the current position of the knob which is high so I can just manually turn it back down ah it recorded it because I have the record button still on okay remember it's probably a better idea to just hold the record while you're recording pattern automation that way when you let go of it it's no longer recording All right, so let's do that again it's clear there we go and we'll hit record now so it no longer records. I'm going to turn down the hi-hats a bit. All right. Now there's per step, parameter, and automation clear is when you're in the modulation menu. Ah, we haven't talked about the modulation menu. There is a modulation page over here, right? When I hit the modulation button. And basically, you have the modulation destination and modulation depth over here for each voice. And here I have my modulation master control. This is the speed of the modulation source and the waveform. The waveforms are sine wave, saw wave, triangle wave, square wave. And then you have this sort of uh, like a super saw kind of a thing. And then you have a downward saw and you have a uh, sample and hold type uh, random modulation source. So it's kind of like using a sample and hold with the noise in the input, right? And you have a global modulation level here as well. So let's use the sine wave and modulate maybe the pitch of the kick drum again, because that's easy to hear, right? So what we'll do is the kick drum is the first one here, the first voice. So destination would be tune. Right, we've pressed tune over here, and depth will put uh, sixty percent. Now let's hear that. Ah, actually, we want it on the top here. All right there, we go. Now, as I turn this up, can you hear how we're modulating the pitch of the kick drum? Right. Now the modulation level, I turn it all the way down and there's again, no modulation at all. So you can use this very effectively in live performance where you have like a programmed modulation matrix, but it will it'll only be active when you turn the modulation level up. Right? Now let's use the sample and hold shape here. This 
is that downward saw, right? And here's that, the one that looks like a super saw. Square wave, triangle wave. And you can apply this to pretty much anything. Right, let's see what all parameters you can apply modulation to, all the destinations available. You have tune, well, basically all eight parameters, right? You have tune, decay, parameter one, parameter two, uh, frequency of the filter, drive, effect send, and level. So you can affect the volume, the overall volume of the, the voice, how much of it is going to the effects. Yeah, basically all eight parameters per voice are uh, possible destinations for modulation and you can have uh, modulation depth for each one right so if i choose right now this is uh, our pitch for voice one now if i choose let's say parameter two here as you can see our modulation amount has uh, has a different value it's showing zero Right, so you can actually have a different modulation amount sent for each of the destinations. And you can have as many destinations as you want. You can have all eight uh, parameters of all four voices with full modulation for all of them. That's kind of crazy, but you can do that if you want. But right now we've set parameter two of the kick drum. We gave it a 40% modulation depth. Right, and if I hold clear and hold this, now we've erased, no, there's no more modulation going to that step. Now, yeah, we've already been using the step sequencer. We've been using it in step programming, which is the most obvious and straightforward feature. It's just entering trigger like most drum machines and groove boxes, uh, like we've been doing, just pressing buttons, right? Now there's tap programming, and the way you do that is by holding the rec button, and then using the tap buttons over here. Let's make a new pattern. We're gonna go into the pattern menu here. We're gonna choose one that is available, get out of the pattern menu, and let's give ourselves a four on the floor, just as a kind of a metronome, and then we'll manually uh, enter the other voices. Oh, <laughs> it still has that modulation there. I'm just gonna turn it down on the main one here. And now I hold rec and we'll do hi-hat. How about a snare drum? And I see it quantizes for me, right? Obviously, this is uh, a step sequencer, not an event sequencer. So if you're a little late, it's going to quantize it for you. Now let's do something with voice two. There you go. Right, so if you're that kind of person like me who likes to actually play the drum machine and not just program with steps, you can do that very easily with this. I like this pattern. I'm going to save it. Rec, save number three. And uh, choose another one. And I'm going to do it differently this time. Let's get out of pattern. And we'll do hi-hats as the metronome, right? And, uh, and we'll record everything else. I didn't love that. I played it, uh, anticipated it, and it didn't really read the steps where I wanted them to go. So I'm going to do this again. Ah, nope. If you don't love how it ended up, you can 
fix it manually. There we go. Okay, I want a different kind of snare sound. There we go. Cool. So I like this pattern. Let's save it. Now I changed the kit too. So I'm going to save a kit to the same slot on the kit page. Right. And now this kit slot is empty because I was using the same kit as the previous pattern for the pattern that went there. Right. And even the pattern page can actually be useful in live performance as well. You can have all your patterns here and just sort of navigate through them um, during your song, you know, change the beats that you have pre-programmed and just noodle around with the knobs, and create variation that way, you know? Yeah, so that's tap programming. Let's move on. You can use it as a drum synthesizer module with electronic drum pads which I have, and I will show you uh, later, probably at the end of the video, because that'll require a different setup than what I have right now. And yeah, the, the same way that we recorded by playing these buttons, you can also record a pattern with the external triggers plugged into the back of the precons right here. So again, you could do like a metronome track and then play uh, while recording. Now you hit record, and as you play your trigger, it'll record what you played as part of the pattern. Now they're ratchets, per step ratchets, right? And uh, the way you do ratchets is you actually choose the step, you hold the step that you wanna do a ratchet on, and then you hold the ratchet button, the four trigger buttons now become the ratchet division, right? So let's have a look at that. So let's say I wanna ratchet right on this step right here. Now I hold, the ratchet button and I give it a ratchet see? or I can change it to a different division very easy to do ratchets on this thing yeah, ratchet on the snare there do one on this uh, voice two here. Cool. So that's how you do ratchets on the percons. Very easy. And you can also do odds, right? What are the odds of a step happening or not, right? So that's another way to add variation to your beat so they don't always repeat every time they cycle through. And it's pretty much the same way that we did ratchets, except that instead of holding the ratchet button, we use the odds button, right? And there are two odds buttons because there are two sets of values, right? So you have, with odds one, you get the ones that are in black over here. So half, a third, a quarter, and an eighth. And with odds two, you get the white ones over here, which is two thirds, three quarters, four fifths, and seven eighths. And then uh, you also have probability, which is uh, similar to the odds, right? It's also another way to decide if uh, a step will happen or not, but it's based on probability rather than odds. And that, again, you hold the step, hold the probability and choose one of the four trigger buttons here and that'll give you 10, 25, 50 or 90% probability of that step happening or not. Let's do both, right? So we'll do some odds. I'm gonna hold this step. I'm gonna give it a one third odds of happening. And this one, I'm gonna give it a seven eighths odds of happening. And then we're gonna, our second kick drum, we're gonna give it a probability of 50%. Well, let's play that and we'll hear how the pattern will vary over time. See how some steps don't always happen? That's odds and probability right there. Very cool. Right. Yeah, there are a couple more things. I'm going to go pick up my girls from school. I'll be right back.
Okay, I'm back. So where were we? First step, parameter locks. So you may want to design hi-hat track with closed and open hi-hats and specific steps need longer decay. So on the percons, you can first step record any voice parameter changes as a parameter lock. To do so, push and hold the step button and alter any control in the relevant voice section. Once the button is released, the position of the control is automatically saved. Ah, cool. So let's say we want a long decay on this hi-hat note right here. We'll turn up the decay on it, right? And then let go. Let's listen. Maybe we'll hear it better if we do it on the kick pitch, perhaps. So I'm going to hold this kick, turn up the pitch there. Let go, and <laughs> cool. That's cool. That was too much. Let's make it not so high. Right there. Cool. So we have a little bit higher pitch. kick hit versus the other right so that's per step parameter locks so basically any parameter that you want to change on a specific step you can do so by just holding the step changing the parameter and then it'll stay now we can copy and paste steps this feature can come in handy if you want to copy a step with specific parameter locks and paste it elsewhere in the sequence to do this, push and hold the step you want to copy and press Rec once. The step has been copied. To paste it, activate a new step and hold it or push and hold an existing step and press Shift once. So Shift would be the paste for that. So let's say we want this kick right here. we'll hit this step hit record and then activate another step and press shift cool so it copied this kick with the lower pitch over to here let's copy it to this one as well so actually we want to first we hold the step then we hit record then we hold the step and press shift there we go. So now we have these three are identical steps because they were copy and pasted from the first one. Very cool. Step, copy, and paste. We're getting there, folks. Almost done here. And uh, pattern clearing. To clear patterns, initiate the pattern menu. Press and hold the clear button and press the step buttons. Self-explanatory, straightforward. Let's say I want to delete the second or the third third pattern here. I hold clear, hit that. Cool. Kit clearing is the same as pattern clearing. About the configuration settings, we, we've already come here to set the accents on and off. We set it on. There are a couple of other things. You can set the clock source over here, uh, either internal, MIDI, or analog. Uh, you can set the clock in parts per quarter note, the clock out parts per quarter note. And there's a submenu here for trigger sensitivity. So you can set trigger sensitivity. You can set multi MIDI channel configuration and single channel MIDI configuration. MIDI mode can be single or multi. MIDI clock out can be on or off. MIDI continuous clock on or off. MIDI through on or off. MIDI sequence out on or off. MIDI CC out on or off. Pot catch on or off. Kit link on or off. That's for the kits to be linked to the patterns. And uh, smooth parameter recording on or off. That's nice to have like a glide between different settings as you record parameter automation. And uh, the vintage bucket brigade mode, right? You can choose that rather than the normal 
bucket brigade mode, which is clean. You can have the vintage one, which is noisier. And holding these two buttons will give you a factory reset. And the way to get into configuration settings, I've mentioned already, but it's basically shift and mod, right? So right here, these are the ones you'd hold to do a full factory reset. We don't want to do that right now. And that's it. The only thing left to demonstrate will be uh, using an external trigger. All right, so for the last demonstration of the Percons, I'm excited to try this out, is using a trigger pad. And this is a special trigger pad by Yamaha that has three zones. So I have one rim, another rim, and the middle here. And yeah, you can't plug this directly to the perk cons. You actually, for the perk cons directly, you would need to use individual pads with individual outputs. But I happen to have a module by Vasky over here, uh, and video coming soon about this module, by the way, uh, that splits a three zone drum pad into three trigger outputs. So I can actually use this um, this awesome Yamaha pad that's normally set up with my acoustic drums over there. And yeah, I'm excited to actually try that out as well. Eventually at some point playing my acoustic drums and triggering uh, sounds from the percons directly within the kit by using this pad over here. But for now, I just want to demonstrate how you can do it. So uh, in the middle, I have the kick. I have the, the snare on one of the rims here, and then voice two on the other rim. So with a single pad, I can get all three of those sounds. And I intentionally left voice four. I mean, I could have set up another pad for voice four here, but I want voice four to be sort of like my metronome, my hi-hats. So I'm gonna just program some hats here and uh, I can switch those around. Maybe I want the snare to be in the middle, right? And have the kick on one of the sides instead. That's it. Hope you like the video. Hope you like the percons. If you have any questions or comments, comment down below. See you soon. Stay noisy. <laughs>